Coach, um, Ghana is starting his game tomorrow in this exciting tournament uh, with a team uh, playing against uh, Cape Verde. How did you prepare yourself to get in here and what is your ambition for this competition? Um, well, our uh, preparation was done uh, in uh, Ghana. We had our training camp in uh, uh, Kumasi. Um, so then, of course, the travel time from uh, Kumasi to here was, um, was uh, very short. Um, so it's been a good uh, camp so far, good spirit uh, in the camp. And, of course, uh, the players, we like to think, are, are well prepared. Um, as regards uh, expectations, um, the, you can only expect uh, expectations if you perform well enough. And uh, our objective, of course, is in a starting game tomorrow, is um, to be able to play at uh, a good enough and a high enough level that uh, enables us to, to win the game. I think you never want to speak too far uh, into the future, particularly one day before the first game. But it's important always, always to get off to uh, a good start. Um, but there is not one bad team in this tournament. And uh, our approach to every game has to be the same. And uh, yes, we would like to get off to uh, a winning start. Thank you, Coach Andreu. Uh, vous serez peut-être à votre huitième can, c'est ça? Septième ou huitième? Oui, huitième. Huitième can, c'est une vraie longévité. En quoi cette can sera différente des celles des, des autres à laquelle vous avez déjà participé? Et comment vous vous êtes préparé pour cette compétition? Non, je pense que il n'y a pas de différence. Euh... La Cannes est une compétition qui est très très difficile. Il euh, y a beaucoup de, de bonnes équipes. Toutes les équipes qui se sont qualifiées sont, sont de très bonnes équipes qui méritent d'être d'être là. Alors voilà, pour moi personnellement, c'est juste être prêt physiquement, mentalement et, et faire le boulot, aider mon équipe à, à aller le plus loin possible. Mais voilà, ça fait plaisir d'être encore là, de, de, de faire partie du plus grand tournoi du, du, de notre continent. Et je suis à à Abidjan, c'est comme ma deuxième maison et je suis très content, très content d'être là. Ok, questions Yes, so, yeah, in front. Microphone, here. Yeah. Uh, coach, uh, good, uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Oluwayemi Omolagba. I represent uh, Betitude Australia. Coach, it's uh, close to 20, 31 years ago now since uh, the Ghanaian team left the Hafcon. Uh, any pressure on you to deliver and uh, should uh, the fans of the Ghanaian national teams have high expectations this time around? And to the captain, Andrea, you... No, let's, let's the coach answer oh, the Okay, question. okay. Thank you. Okay, so as regards the, um, the pressure and the, the expectations, you as head coach, you have to accept if you are the head coach of the Black Stars, you have to expect high expectations. You know, we, we have a fanatical support. The Ghanaians, they love their football and they look forward to this competition. So with that always comes pressure. Pressure on the players and of course pressure on the head coach to perform. But that's why we are here. We are here and one thing you, you cannot do is you cannot avoid this. This is something you have to accept and you have to welcome. The pressure that comes with the performances and um, putting in good enough performances to do well in this competition. Okay. Here, if the black star jersey, you see, I claim my All right, thank you very much. I'm Asari Obeng with Kenny TV Ghana. Coach, um, since you took over, um, you've played, I think, about 10 games, and most Ghanaians have been complaining about the approach to the games, especially the first half performances for the Black Stars team. Um, usually playing the two DMs, of which um, ball progression sometimes becomes difficult for the team. Are we to expect something different in this particular Afghan team from the Ghana's team? especially the first half performance, how we are going to play well 
and probably he scored some good goals. Thank you. Um, as, as head coach for the period of time that I've been involved, um, I am uh, very conscious, very conscious of, of areas of our game that we could do better, where we could improve. And this is always the job of the, the head coach with the, the players to improve on them areas. And what we have managed to do, of course, is to be here, which is the, the, the most important thing. This is competition mode, you know, where qualification in group stages, playing at home and playing away, um, it's different. We are now in tournament mode and we know that in tournaments anything can happen. So, yes, I'm very conscious of the areas that we need to do better and we will need to do better in them areas to be successful in this, this tournament. Okay. Um, the ladies there on the back, I'm coming to you after. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Rahil Osterwalder, I'm a Swiss journalist. Uh, my question is concerning the selection of the goalkeeper for the last World Cup. Ati Sigi was the number one player for the last three games he didn't play. So what is your motivation for selecting the number one goalkeeper and will it be Ati Sigi for the next games? Um, my um, selection process is, is exactly the same um, for the goalkeeper than it is for uh, every other player. There is always a, a process that, um, that, that is taken. We um, ultimately as head coach um, I am the person that makes the final decision. Um, but of course I have a coaching staff with me, including a goalkeeping coach, if we are talking specifically about, about the goalkeeping area. Uh, and in these conversations and analyses that take place, it's where we make choices on starting, coming off the bench, starting the next game. Um, and this is normal. This is normal in, in every team and the, these are normal processes that, that take place. So as regards to the goalkeeper, again the goalkeeper situation would be no different to the selection process that would go that we would go through for any other position. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Let me do some discrimination and then we come back to the man. Thank you. Uh, my question goes to Mr. Ayu. Uh, I would say that the Ghanaian people are not happy with the performance you showed uh, in the FIFA World Cup 2022. Uh, what can you promise them as a senior player in this tournament? Thank you. I think um, the performance in the World Cup, when we look at it globally, was pretty pretty not bad. We we showed a lot. We beat a great team like Korea. We we're close to, to doing something versus Portugal and we we're very unlucky versus versus Uruguay. So I think that everyone saw that we gave everything that we had. But that's past. And um being in the team for, for this long time I'm not going to sit here and be given promises about what I can say and what I can promises that we are working really hard we are following the coaches instruction we know what the boss wants us to do we are preparing for the the game that's coming and we're going to take it game by game we have been always let me be frank and honest we have always been favorites in this tournament for the past years but if we look at today's tournament we are not part of the favorites when people are speaking people are doing predictions etc so we need to accept it and make sure that we we surprise we stay calm we do our job but we're going to take it game by game we're not going to start promising things but we make sure that what i can promise is sunday we're going to be there 100 percent and give everything that we have to 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 make sure we have a, a good start thank you yeah uh there on the back with Nigerian jersey. I like my Hello coach. Um, I didn't Salah Sahara football. Um, criticism in recent times and uh, with your style of play has been to 
play two defensive midfielders. Last time you were questioned on that in Kumasi, you said you thought you you actually wanted one of the players to be a bit more progressive. We saw in the World Cup qualifiers and the recent friendly that probably they are not getting that instruction from you. What's going to be different versus Cape Verde? A team probably we are more fancied to play more explosive or expansive football. What is going to change there? Is it going to be the same or we'll see something different? Well, I, uh, I, one thing I, I know and understand is that you, you certainly wouldn't expect me to uh, give away to you um, a team or even a team plan uh, going into the game. I have uh, sat, uh, of course, at the end of all of our uh, press conferences and addressed um, our Ghanaian press after all of the games and and been asked uh, similar questions and and uh, all I can do is give what I think are honest and uh, open uh, answers and yes there have been games where we have uh, played what you would perceive as two um, defensive type players in, in midfield and yes uh, in a way of playing that I wanted us to play or use them in a different way so this is all part and parcel of uh, what happens in a game and there with the, the exact same philosophy we've had some very good moments in in the games so I think we have to look at everything that we can improve on um, as regards surprising uh, anybody this is the work that we do the only ones that are privy to that are of course myself and of course the players that we work with so ultimately we want one thing we want one thing and that is to win a game what will be a very difficult game against a good team to win our first game and then of course to to continue to make progress okay yeah in the front coach i'm uh, alvaro andrade from voice of america portuguese service did you make any special preparation against cape verde or no um, I think as regards uh, the, the preparation is, of course, what we show the players in um, our preparation in the way that, um, that they play. Um, uh, probably I would have to say that most, most of our preparation has been very much about how we want to play. Um, we have to be aware of the qualities that, that they have, the threats that they have, because they are a very good team with, with very good players. So we have to be aware of that, but, but probably, as I say, the higher percentage of the work that we've done is very much about uh, our, our style of play and um, how we want to go about the, uh, our way of playing. A question for Andre Ayou, Mr. Andre Ayou. Okay, here in the front. In, first. I'll come back to you after. Hello, Andre. My name is Delali from in Ghana. My question is regards to you have the chance of making history as one of the players with a lot of caps at the African Cup of Nations. Is it something that you are really looking forward to? And in instances where you are not been given the chance to feature in games, are you going to be worried? Um, well, I'm here. I'm here as the, the the leader of the players. I know. I know what I have to do. I know. I know my role. We're here to to win game as a teams. We we're a group of 27 seven players where we want to to make sure that we lift the flag of Ghana high, that we perform on the pitch and do what we want to do. All the 27 players want to play. I think um, when you're in a team and you're in a, such a such a big competition, everyone wants to be be on the field every time, every moment, which is. Which is important because if you don't have that meaning that uh, there's a problem with the with the with the player. But um, when I look at myself personally, yes, there are I think one, two, or three records that could be broken. I worked really hard to get to to, to this situation and in this position. But most importantly, is the is the team is what we're going to do to 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 win games. And if I'm able to to break these records with winning games. 
so so be it and that would be wonderful and that's what i'm hoping for but breaking records and not having the results that goes with it then it's it's not what i'm looking for as as a captain of the team but yes if you sit here and say as a player you get to a level where you can break records then you want to you want to do it and you're going to do everything in your ability to make sure that you break those records but most importantly is always the team and as a leader of the squad i look at what we can do as a team to make sure that we win games and go as far as we can okay there on the back i'm coming so my name is chris i'm a nigerian journalist um coach Contrary to so many opinions that local players are not quality enough, you have three local players in your team. What can you say about the quality of these players and the quality of the Ghanaian Premier League? Um, so I think the, um, um, we have three local players in the, the squad and um, they're not in the squad because they're local players. You know, the there's no number that I have to put in the squad. The three players that are in the squad is because they deserve to be in the squad. So that's first and, and foremost. Um, what I um, have done in the period of time that, um, that I've been here, particularly as, as head coach, is that I've spent a, a lot of time in, in Ghana watching the local games and not, the, not those just in Accra, throughout the country and and um, and uh, I've enjoyed doing that and and I think what's what's happened is over that period of time my knowledge of the 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 local game ha has increased um, I'm still learning you know because there there is that difference between those that um, that are playing uh, abroad as regards you know facilities and and pitches or so so I'm still learning, you know, and um, but certainly I, I think I'm in a better position to uh, assess the local players. I think I'm in a better position now than what I was maybe six months ago. And um, that, uh, that learning process is something that will continue. Yes, sir. Second row, yeah. I'm coming to you after. Sir. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sadiq Adams from Ghana. Uh, question to... Captain Andre, uh, this is your eighth, and uh, we never say this is your last because we are always going to see you here. You never know. But how different is this from the previous ones in terms of preparation and mentality and uh, ambition as well? The last one was very disastrous. I don't know the target for the team and for you personally. How important is this one in terms of mentality and preparation? Thank you. Well, um, it's a huge tournament for us um, as a team. I think, uh, as you said, the last tournament was, was very difficult, but being in a lot of tournaments, I think there were a lot of things that happened for the tournament to go that way. But we need to learn from it and make sure that it doesn't happen again, whether it's on the pitch or, or off the pitch. But yes, it's true that it's my eighth if I've gone and then um, I've been sitting here a few times for a few years now and the ambition doesn't changed since I started from day one from my first half in 2008 I've always had the ambition to 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 make sure that we are able to to bring the trophy home one day we will always come with that ambition we can't promise it what we can do is make sure that we give everything that we can day by day, game by game, take our time. We've seen a lot of teams win this tournament without people expecting them to win. We've seen teams that were expected to win who has won it. But there's one thing that I know is in this tournament you can't predict anything. And if you can't predict anything, then the doors are open for, for everyone. And when the doors are open, we need to slide in. We don't have to give no chances and I believe that the squad is determined and the ambition is to win the next game and from there we'll see how we take it to the next one.
Okay. Then. Oui, c'est Natiku New World TV. Euh, André, euh, ça, ceci pourrait être votre dernière canne. C'est ah bon? possible. <rire> <rire> si jamais c'était votre dernière canne, euh, que voudriez-vous laisser comme héritage euh, à la sélection ghanéenne euh, Comment vous, conce euh, vous, vous êtes en train de concevoir tout ça Je ne pense pas à ça, pour être honnête. Euh... Je suis physiquement bien, euh, je suis prêt mentalement, je, je bosse très dur, Les, mes coéquipiers, l'entraîneur, le boss à côté, tout le monde est, est derrière moi, tout le monde me pousse, tout le monde m'aide, alors je, suis pas, je ne pense pas à la canne ou la dernière canne, la seule chose que je sais c'est qu'il y a une canne là qui commence pour nous demain, la prochaine c'est dans, dans un an, mais ça, ça ne m'intéresse pas aujourd'hui, ce qui m'intéresse c'est ce qui va se passer là, et comme j'ai dit, pour, comme pour les matchs, on va prendre chaque match par match et on verra la suite. Il ne pas, faut pas déjà avancer sur, sur la suite ou penser à autre chose. Match par match, c'est comme ça que la vie avance. Il faut vivre au présent et après on verra la suite. Merci. Oui, allez, Bonjour André, je suis David Tienge, je travaille pour le quotidien Le Jour au Cameroun. Euh, je suis content que vous ayez souri avant de répondre à la précédente question parce que vous étiez un peu crispé, on vous sentait un peu crispé. Le foot c'est un peu aussi euh, ça. Je sais que vous avez sur le dos papa qui a gagné la canne en 82, qui vous chambre certainement pour vous demander euh, c'est quoi votre vous... travail aujourd'hui. Et, et puis, vous oui, vous avez deux records au moins, ou bien deux anciennes gloires de la canne derrière vous. Il y a Bedi et il y a Rigo. Peut-être Rigo, vous allez battre son record de main. Est-ce que vous êtes, vous, vous attaquez aussi au, au, au record d'Abedi qui a gagné en 82 Merci. Um, le plus important pour un Africain, la coupe la plus importante pour un Africain, c'est la Coupe d'Afrique des Nations. C'est vrai que j'en ai joué pas mal. J'ai été très proche à maintes, maintes reprises de, de soulever cette coupe. Euh, je n'ai pas encore eu cette chance là mais je pense que vous, comme vous tous depuis ces années vous me connaissez vous savez que je ne vais pas lâcher je ne vais pas lâcher alors euh, que ce soit aujourd'hui ou demain ou après demain je ne sais pas quand mais en tout cas moi je donnerai tout pour, euh, pour un jour ramener ce, ce trophée au pays que ça se fasse un jour ou pas ça c'est dans la main de Dieu mais moi je vais tout tout, tout faire pour euh, un jour ramener cette coupe qui nous, qui nous a fuit depuis 40, 41 ans. Mais euh, par rapport à mes records, euh, voilà, comme je dis, c'est beaucoup de discussions autour de ça, euh, euh, de battre mon, mon grand Rio, le, le sélectionneur aujourd'hui du, du, du Cameroun, euh, être le joueur à avoir marqué dans quelques... Voilà, il y a beaucoup de choses qui, qui sont en train de, de passer autour, mais pour moi, c'est... C'est des choses qui seraient bien de, de, de battre en tant que joueur. J'ai travaillé dur pour arriver déjà à ce niveau-là. Et être proche de battre certains records, je vais essayer de les faire. Parce que si tu bats des records, il y en a aussi qui vont venir battre les tiens un jour. C'est comme ça que le football, le football marche. Mais pour moi, ce n'est pas, pas aujourd'hui la priorité. Je suis vraiment focalisé sur, sur le match du Cap Vert. Et après le match du Cap Vert, chaque chose viendra en, en son temps. Yes, here in France. Aurel Kompopo from TV3 Ghana. Uh, my question is to you, Chris. Uh, we've not uh, had any updates uh, with regards to injuries and player fitness ahead of the Cape Verde game. Uh, what we do know is that 26 players trained in the camp in Ghana. Kudus joined the team to come to Ivory Coast. Uh, what's the fitness level like? Is everyone okay for tomorrow's game? Um, yeah, so as regards the, the build-up, you are uh, correct that, um, that uh, Mohamed Kudus was the, the, the only player that um, uh, joined us uh, a little bit later because of uh, an injury he sustained. Um, but he's with us now and um, we, will, we will assess him. We know we have the game tomorrow, but um, we will assess him 
for uh, tomorrow. Um, but as regards, certainly uh, everybody else, uh, everybody else is is fit and well. Okay, I will take two last questions and then we end this press conference here, and then the last one there. Bonsoir, coach. Bonsoir, André. Votre papa est, a remporté la, la canne avec le Ghana en 82. Et depuis là, c'est plusieurs années de disette pour le Ghana. Vous étiez proche de pouvoir décrocher le Graal en 2015. Malheureusement, la Côte d'Ivoire l'a emporté au, dans les séances de tir au but. Quelles sont vos réelles ambitions pour cette Coupe d'Afrique des Nations Pensez-vous que vous avez la faculté nécessaire pour aller finalement décrocher ce sacre qui vous, qui vous est cher ouais, euh, <coughs> euh, J'ai été très proche à, en 2010 où on perd en finale contre l'Égypte et en 2015 contre la Côte d'Ivoire. Euh, quelques demi-finales au pénalty. Ça se joint à rien, on sait, on sait tous, mais comme j'ai dit et je répète, c'est... C'est un rêve de, de, de tout joueur africain de remporter ce, ce trophée aussi prestigieux. Et nous, le Ghana, on ne va pas se mettre en avant en parlant de, de trophée quand il y a trois matchs, après il y a les 16e, il y a les quarts, il y a beaucoup de matchs. Alors on va prendre notre temps. Ce qu'on sait, c'est que tous les matchs qu'on va jouer, on va pour gagner. On va jouer pour gagner les matchs. Et on va prendre ça match par match. Et à la fin, on verra où ça, où ça nous mènera. Mais j'ai confiance en tout le boulot qu'on a fait. J'ai confiance en ce que le, le coach et le staff ont mis en place. Et on va se battre pour vraiment montrer une très bonne image du Ghana ici en Côte d'Ivoire. On sait que le Ghana aussi sera le deuxième pays supporté ici par tous les Ivoiriens. Et ça, notre accueil ici, ça a été très chaleureux. Je voudrais remercier tout, tous les Ivoiriens de, de, de vraiment leur accueil. Je suis, je suis très content et très, très fier. De, de voir ça, comme c'est vraiment comme mon deuxième, mon deuxième pays ici. Mes enfants ont du sang ivoirien, ma femme aussi est de là. Alors euh, voilà, pour moi, je suis à la maison et on va tout faire pour laisser une très très bonne empreinte ici. Très bien. Là-bas Uh, coach, it's Lorenz here from South Africa. Just to follow up on the goalkeeping question, um, Richard Ofori obviously plays at Orlando Pirates in South Africa, and even the Pirates fans were surprised that he got called up because he's not been a regular, he's been struggling with injury. Um, but he comes to the national team, he even captains the national team, and he starts. Um, what is it about Richard that makes him you know, one of the players that you trust? Um, to call to the national team, even when he maybe isn't mentally or physically fit um, to play at club level? Mm. Um, well, uh, what, what I'd like to think is that we have um, three goalkeepers that are in the squad that um, uh, all could do a very good job for us. <clears throat> they, have, they all have different uh, qualities, um, uh, certainly are over over the years the goalkeeping situation is always a, a, a different and difficult one sometimes you'll have a goalkeeper that's playing regular at his club sometimes you'll have a, a goalkeeper that's not playing so regular but can do a fantastic job with a national team so these are the things that we always take into consideration as regards the qualities that, that Richards has he's a big personality he is somebody that I would like to think because I can only speak for a short period of time Dede here can speak for a longer period of time I'd like to think that that um, Richard Afori is somebody that has never let the, the nation down as regards availability and the, the job that he has done but in the same way I would speak about uh, all three goalkeepers you know and Whichever goalkeepers play in whichever game they play in, it's because we have total confidence in their performance and, uh, and them, their abilities as a goalkeeper. Thank you, uh, Coach, for uh, giving us a one minute extra time. I'll take that opportunity to ask the last, last, last question. 
and you do it on this side okay thank you thank you so much i'm calling zokinyo from kenya andre 13 years ago i did an interview with you and your your team was camping in kenya there's something you told me in that interview that you will always want to leave a legacy playing for ghana we are in 2024 13 years later do you feel you're living your dream according to how things have been since that time when i spoke to you thank you very much um hmm. anytime i have this shirt on it's a dream i grew up wanting to wear the black stars jersey that was my dream from the start uh, growing up i was in the black star bus when they're going to play games with my dad i I only had one thing in mind as a kid was to play for the Ghana Black Stars and I've li lived that dream for seven, 16, 17 years now and every day I come into camp, every day I have the chance to wear this jersey is, is the best moment in my football career because that's when I feel the most, the most joy because wearing this jersey for me is everything that's, that counts. But as I said, uh, things have been very, very well. I thank God for, for, for the international career that's been happening for me. But I believe that there is, there is much to be done. Um, you never know when your moment is going to arrive. What is important is for you to believe, for you to work hard. Believe in the work that you have done. Keep working. And at one moment, the that star that you're waiting for to add on the jersey will, will, will come and add itself into it. But uh, through all these years, I think the dream I'm living is, is fabulous. But if I want it to be, to be great and to be at the pinnacle, it will be before the end, uh, before I hang my boots, to be able to lift that trophy one day. That's my biggest dream. Merci beaucoup, André Ayou. Merci, Coach Chris. Merci. And thank you to you guys. Uh, next press conference will be the coach of Kevet with one of the players. Ryan Mendes is the one coming in. And good luck for the tomorrow game. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Subscribe to the channel and hit on the notification bell for more.